In this episode, give your viewers a really special welcome when they first type in chat by showing their Twitch avatar picture raining down. Also, you can have emotes whenever they're typed in the chat, they'll be showing down, raining down on the screen in a, in a fun animated way. And finally, mods and VIPs can ray down multiple or single emotes to really give an uh, impact to a particular point in your stream. Hello, and welcome to Streamer Bot Bytes, where I cover how to set up and to make the most of the awesome Streamer Bot. There is one video per topic to make it easy as possible to follow and find. When relevant, sample import code will be provided to make it even easier for you to get started and to add functionality to your stream. So let's get started with the topic for this video. First part to set up for the Emote Rain is in Streamer Bot, and this is incredibly easy. Simply select the Servers and Clients tab at the top, select WebSocket Server, and if Auto Start is not already uh, selected, select that and then click on Start Server, and that's it set up. Adding the Emote Rain into OBS is also really simple. To do this, we just need to add a browser source. Now, ideally, this is in a nested scene, so something like an alert scene, which is in all your other scenes in OBS. Alternatively, you can reuse the same browser source amongst your scenes, um, which is recommended so if any rain is happening at one point, it will transition between the different ones. You just need to get the name. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's not referenced by anything else, so it's just for your benefit. The size. 1920 by 1080 or if you're using a different uh, size in OBS for your canvas then feel free to change that. Finally the web page prflad.com slash emote rain slash. There's different options to run the emote rain. So to keep it aligned with version 1 you'll just get the version 1 functionality with this URL which is the same as before. If you want to have everything, put question mark all. That'll add everything. If you don't want the welcome, so you just want the rain functionality of the exclamation mark ER, space rain, and then the emotes, you can do a question mark rain. And if you just want the welcome and the regular emote rain, use question mark welcome. Now these are all in the video description, so you can look at there to which one you want to pick in here but once you put that in place we are all set up and ready to test so to test this we just type in the first words so first message from a user in chat please note there's a setting under events so settings and events in streamer bot where you can reset this for testing so that's working send another message it's not responding to that then we can put in a emote. So it's emote there, or select it from wherever you want to. You'll see that's then reacting and pushing down the emote. And finally, we can use the, the emote rain command. So exclamation mark er space rain is the command to trigger this. And then you put the emotes afterwards. So with the regular emote and the emote rain, there's a maximum number of 20 emotes it will cap at. So you can put more, but you don't really want to do too many here. So let's trigger that and let's see the effect we get here. You can see here, a steady rain interdispersed with all the emotes selected. And now for an optional part to go through to explain the code behind this. Because there's no actions in Streamerbot, this is just explaining the web page. So, um, with the Streamerbot Emote Rain V2, we've got references to a style sheet in here. We've got a container, which is uh, where the Emote Rain falls. We link into a library, which is used for animation, and we link to our script as well. So, style is the easiest thing to go through first, and we can see here the container is just using up the full amount of the web page, which is going to use a full size of the container that's used in uh, in the OBS uh, browser source itself. We then 
do some other options with making sure that things are um, selected correctly. And finally, this is defining the actual actual size of the element that's falling. So if you want a bigger remote range or smaller, you can modify the, the width and height here. Down onto the script. So this is the the main engine um, part of this. So we can specify the maximum number of remotes. I don't think we use diff number here, so let's uh, leave that there. Um, the first thing we, we do in the code, and this is actually referenced at the very bottom. So once we define everything, we start the connect WS function. So let's go back up again. We check to see if we have WebSocket support, which is required uh, to connect to StreamerBot. And if so, we then connect to it. We define if we um, that connection is closed, it will try and reconnect itself again. So the set timeout of 10,000 is 10 seconds, and it will try and run the function connect WS. What it then does is it's looking at um, the URL parameters, what we pass in the top, so the options we've got, like all, rain, or uh, welcome. It logs those into the console, which we've got there just in case we want to test that. But if we have first word support, we need to have the first words request as part of uh, what we send to StreamerBot. So what we're doing here is we are building up what to send to StreamerBot. So we're again logging, we're doing it with first word support. And it says, I want to send something which is subscribed to the events of chat messages and first words. Now there's examples of the WebSocket stuff in the wiki for StreamerBot. So you can look at a bit more there. Otherwise, we don't need first words. We just subscribe to the chat messages. So that's very similar. And once we subscribe to those events, whenever we get a message back on um, from the WebSocket connection we have to StreamerBot, we will trigger this function here. So the on message, from anything from the WebSocket on message, we trigger the function here. So we're going to look at um, make sure it's things that certain things are defined. Just be a bit more, um, a bit more defined here. So what's happening is um, we are, you know, <coughs> we have some called you know in the data user ID. In this scenario, actually, it's first words. So if this element within the structure that's given to us from Streamerbot is there, it, we know that we have that, and I'm. Just, you building out, um, and now we need to know a way to pull the user image back. And so what we're doing here is we're using um, XML HTTP. It's probably not the cleanest to read through, but what basically we are doing is creating an object to use. And whenever we um, have a state change, so whenever we've effectively downloaded the, the options of the downloaded state of that object will be this, and you run the code. Uh, we actually send the request here at that point uh, before we send it, and then we wait until it hits, and at that point we then run the code here. So we can get the um, get the response back. We have effectively the URL we need. We can then specify the confetti container, which is container we want, and we can inject for the number of elements we, we have here which is 50 of the um, of the uh, Moat Terrain welcomes. So you get 50 of the uh, viewer's avatar picture. And then we basically create the elements within the page. We use an animation library and we specify the background. So that's the background of the the elements that are falling to be the response text, which is the, the web address for the avatar picture. And then we, we put this into the uh, the div and we run an animation. And so we basically, this is the, the emote rain welcome. And so we check for that. Um, so that'll be hit. Otherwise, we check any message we get through. So any message in chat get notified from StreamerBot to the web browser source. And with each message, we have an emote section and length. So if we have actually a moat section which is more than zero, so there's emotes in there, we then set the emote count there to these um, you know, um, 
Oh, so first we have it, yeah, if we have it read in, then we check if it's over the maximum number of emotes, which is 20. So if it's over the maximum, we limit it to 20. Otherwise, uh, we just read in the, the length of that. And then we go through each emote in turn. So for i equals zero to, well, it's less than the emote count, we increment. And then we run the command called emote rain on the URL we have. And that emote rain command will show in a minute. And if we have the, the ER rain, so that's the text to trigger the event and the role. So this is, is if the message is from someone that's a VIP or a uh, moderator. So um, if you wanted to make it moderators and streamer only, like that's from a one to a two, that will remove VIP support. And that will then do 50 reigns and it'll space them out with the time um, delay. So as you go through each one, it's going to put another um, one second apart. Otherwise, if it doesn't include a remote rain, we just do a single instance of the remote rain with a slight delay. So the remote rain, this is uh, going to be very similar to what we saw before with the welcome. And it's going to pick the container, get the number of elements that we want to, to go through. Just just going to be one in this case. We're then going to set some animations on that object, pulling the image that's been passed into the function. Up here we pass into the remote rain. Background size is by default as well. We define that in the style sheet. And then we enable the animation and we go from there. So it's worthwhile noting what we do at the end of um, each animation, um, the falling animation, which is part of the, the work that's going on. We will um, do some removal as well. But uh, yes, that's the emote rain functions there. Please like and subscribe to be notified of more videos like this. If there's a topic you'd like covered, please do let me know in the comments or on Discord. Check out my Twitch stream to see the bot in action and for other examples. The links to my Twitch, social media and to streamer bots can be found at vrflad.com. Additional links to others that provide streamer bot content can be also found in the description. Finally, thank you Net for making a great bot and please consider supporting his Patreon which is linked from streamer.bot.